Are you ready to take complete control of your finances? Meet the Budget Smarter Template, your all-in-one solution for managing money effortlessly. How can it be so simple to set up, uniquely tailored to you, and packed with so many automated features? Let's break it down. Need an instant download to get started? Done. Want to know if you can take that January vacation and still cover December's bills? Absolutely. Curious where every dollar is going in real time? Got you covered. And staying within your spending goals? That's a big yes. This template isn't just another tool. It's the only budgeting solution you'll ever need. Try it once and you'll never look back. After the video is over, be sure to check out the description for a link to download the template. The first thing you should do when you download the Budget Smarter Excel template is familiarize yourself with the different tabs in the budget. Let's spend about one minute going through each tab before going in depth on each one so you know what you're getting yourself into. There are four tabs total. The first two are the Setup Sheet tab and the Transactions Log tab. These are the tabs where you'll personalize your budget and add transactions. Let's touch on the Setup tab first. This is where you'll enter your fixed income and your fixed expenses. For income, this will include an estimate or an exact amount of each of your paychecks. For expenses, this will include all of your fixed expenses like mortgage payments, rent, utility bills, or cell phone payments. Before you start entering information into this tab, you'll want to ensure you know the next time you get paid for each of your income sources and how often you get paid. You also want to have a list of each of your fixed expenses or bills, their next due date, how much you pay on average, and how often you pay them. You also want to have an idea of how you want to categorize your income and expenses as well. The nice thing here is that this is completely customizable. Unlike most budget templates, you get to decide how to name each category. You also want to have an idea of how much you want to spend each month in placeholder categories like entertainment, groceries, dining out, and other areas that aren't fixed. There's a place to add those as well, which wasn't the case in my last templates. One more thing you'll need to know before filling out the setup page is the exact amount currently in your checking account, including any pending transactions. Next, we have the Transactions Log tab. This is where you make adjustments to your fixed income and fixed expenses, which are added automatically based on when you enter into the setup sheet page. Those are the green and red sections. This is also where you'll add any new variable transactions in the blue section. There's also a new light blue section that allows you to add variable expenses or income that you'd like to plan for in the future. We'll go through each one of those sections in more detail later. The next two tabs are your information tabs. This is where the Budget Smarter template really separates itself from other budget templates. They allow you to both have instant information about spending trends, where you are against your current goals, and at the same time allows you to have a crystal ball, so to speak, up to five years into the future. Let me explain. First, let's look at the Budget Smarter tab. This tab is going to include any income and transactions that you add to the setup page. If you added a paycheck for every two weeks, it'll show up every two weeks. If you added your mortgage payment for every month, it'll show up every month. This page will also include any variable transactions and also will include placeholders you set up for things like groceries, dining out, or entertainment, which we'll cover later. You'll also notice a running balance that will go up to five years into the future. This allows you to plan a vacation in January and see if your balance will still be able to pay for the bills in December. We'll cover this page in a little more detail later as well. Next, let's touch on the At a Glance tab. This is where you get all the information you need to see if you are on track with your goals. You'll see if you are spending less than you are making, if you are making as much as you thought you would, and if you are spending as much or more than you thought you would. The pie graph will tell you where all your money is going. The placeholder section will tell you exactly where you are at within your monthly goals for things like groceries, entertainment, and dining out. You can also see what your highest, lowest, and average balance will be. And the best part about this tab is that you can view any time frame you want in the past, present, or future. All right, now that you've seen what this budget can do, let's walk through how to set up a practice budget so you can see how easy it is. Let's flip over to the setup sheet tab where I'll enter all the relevant information for my budget. First, I'll start by adding the date I'm starting the budget right here in the upper right hand corner. We'll just say today is January 1st, 2025. 
Then I'll add the current balance in my checking account including any pending transactions. We'll just say for this example that it's exactly $1,000. Now let's add any income sources. In the first line I'll add Andy's paycheck. I'll say that my next paycheck is on January 10th. I get paid every two weeks and I get paid $1,400. I want to categorize this one as regular income. So I'm actually going to come over here and replace the example income category with regular income. That will automatically show up in the drop down under category where I enter my income. So I'll choose that from the drop down. Now let's look at something cool here. I'll flip over to the transactions log and you'll see the paycheck has automatically been added every two weeks. Now let's flip over to the budget smarter tab. You'll notice that the start date is listed there along with the starting balance that you added on the setup page. You'll also notice that your paycheck was added every two weeks and there is also a running balance. Take a good long look at that because once we add fixed expenses that will drop pretty quickly. Alright let's switch back to the setup sheet tab. You'll notice there is an option to add an end date here. You don't need to enter anything here but I want to show you what happens when you do add an end date. Let's say that you know for some reason that you're going to be working this job through the rest of the year. Let's put an end date of December 31st, 2025 and I'll show you what happens. If I flip over to the Budget Smarter tab, you'll notice that it only added the income source through the end of the year. I don't actually have an end date so I'm going to remove that date on the setup page. I'm actually going to add another source of income. I also get paid $1,000 a month from my other job. So I'm going to add side hustle in the income source column. Say that I get paid every one month and that I get paid $1,000. I'll categorize this one as regular income as well but I could add another category if I wanted to over here. I don't need an end date for this one either. Alright, now let's add some fixed expenses. I'll start by adding my mortgage payment. So I'll type mortgage payment in the first fixed expense line. Then I'll add January 3rd as the due date. You'll notice that when you add a line item in the setup page the budget may have to take a half second to think because it's doing a bunch of work in the background for you. So just be patient. I'll tell the template that I pay my mortgage every one month and that it's $1400 each time. I want to categorize this one under housing. So I'll type housing in the first expense category. Then I'll select that from the drop down. Now to save time, I'll just add all my fixed expenses and then explain a couple things. Alright, so a couple callouts here. I've set it up so that most of my fixed expenses are monthly. However, my water and sewer bill gets paid every two months and trash gets paid every three months. I've also got my Amazon Prime membership listed for every one year. I also dedicated $500 every year to a Christmas plan. You'll also notice that I have $200 every month going into savings. I've categorized all my expenses into house, utilities, communication, transportation, insurance, streaming services, gifts, savings, and memberships. But again, you could categorize yours however you want. Now I'm going to flip over to the Budget Smarter tab. You'll see that all of the income and expenses are added in order and the running balance is reflected to change with each income or expense line in the budget. This will go up to five years into the future. You'll also notice that all of those income sources and expenses are added to the transaction log tab. This is where you can make adjustments to this information. For example, if you are an hourly employee and your first paycheck is $1,481 instead of an even $1,400, you can change that here in the actual income column. If you adjust this amount, that adjusted amount will show up on the Budget Smarter tab. If you don't adjust it, the estimated income will remain on the Budget Smarter tab. The same can be said for fixed expenses. Let's say your first electricity bill was $167.33 instead of an even $150. You can enter that under the Actual Amount column. The more you update these amounts, the more accurate your Budget Smarter tab and balance will remain.
All right, so far you may have noticed that we don't have a place on the budget for things like groceries, entertainment, and dining out that might not be fixed amounts each month, but are things that you spend money on every month and have goals in mind for how much you want to spend. Let's take care of that now. I'll flip over to the setup page. The blue section is where I'm going to add these things. Let's add groceries first. I'll add groceries as a category and I'll add $800 as a goal amount. You'll notice something cool on the Budget Smarter tab now. At the end of each month, you have a placeholder for groceries. This feature does a couple of things. It makes sure that your groceries are accounted for each month inside of your budget. But that's not all. This amount adjusts each time you buy groceries throughout the month. I'll show you how that works. Let's flip over to the Transactions Log tab. Under the blue variable transactions tab, let's say that I spend $123.17 on groceries. So I'll add the date that I want grocery shopping as January 10th. Then I'll add grocery store as the description. I'll select groceries from the category and I'll add $123.17 to the debit amount. Now when I flip over to the budget smarter tab, you'll see that the amount is reflected and the placeholder amount is adjusted. If you spend over your allotted amount, the placeholder will show zero. If you spend under the allotted amount, that placeholder will disappear at the start of a new month and that leftover money will roll into your running balance. We can add up to 10 placeholders. So on the setup sheet, I'll add gas for $200 and entertainment for $200 as well. Just a couple things to keep in mind here. Placeholders should have their own category name. So you won't want to copy any of the categories that you have created for other expenses. The other thing to keep in mind is that each time you make a change to your setup sheet, or really any time you make an adjustment to your budget, you want to check the Budget Smarter page to ensure your balance is in good shape. For example, when I flip over to the Budget Smarter page, you'll notice a few of the cells light up different colors. These are meant to be balance warnings. You can change what amount those warnings show up as by adjusting the amounts up in the cells in columns H through J. For right now, you can see that my balance drops below $0 in April. That's obviously not good. That means I need to make some adjustments somewhere in the Budget Setup Sheet tab. So I'll flip back there to see where I can make an adjustment. The most obvious place I can make an adjustment is in the Entertainment Placeholder. So I'll adjust that to $100 a month instead of $200 and see what that does. If I flip back over to the Budget Smarter page, I can see that it looks like that took care of it and now my balance doesn't drop below zero anymore. Alright, there's a couple more things that I want to discuss back on the Transactions Log tab. So I'll flip over there. Let's talk a little more about adding variable transactions. Let's say that you have to pay $100 for a medical bill. I'll add the date of January 11th and a medical bill to the description. I'll add $100 to the amount. Now when I go to choose a category, I notice that there really isn't a category that I like for this expense. I can fix that by heading back to the Setup Sheet tab and adding that to the Pink Category section, as long as you have room. I'll add medical bills as its own category. Now, when I flip back over to the Transactions Log tab, I can see that now, inside of that dropdown, I can select it. We can do the same thing for income too. Let's say that I get a year-end bonus from my job. I'll add the date of January 12th and add year-end bonus to the description. I don't really have a category that I like here, so I'll go back to the Setup Sheet tab and add extra income under the green income categories. Now, when I flip back over to the Transactions Log page, it'll be there and I'll be able to add it. Now, I can add $500 to the income column. Now, I can flip over to the Budget Smarter tab and see that all of those transactions are here as well as the balance has been adjusted. Alright, there is one more section that I need to call out in the Transactions Log tab. The light blue section called Plan Ahead is for exactly what it sounds like it should be for. Let's say that I know at the end of January I'll need to get an oil change on my car. I can add January 31st to my date column then add oil change and $45 as the amount and transportation as the category. This will reflect on the Budget Smarter tab as accounted for. Then at the end of the month when the oil change happens, 
Just add the actual transaction to the variable transactions log and delete it from the plan ahead log. Okay, there's one more tab that we need to talk about in detail, and that's the at a glance tab. This is really cool. Let's say we want to look at January as a whole. I'll just make sure that the start and end dates are the first and last days of January. Now, over here, you'll see if you're spending less than you're making. The next graph will show you how much income you made compared to how much you estimated you would make. You can see that it's $500 more this month because of the year-end bonus. In the next graph, you'll see how much you spent compared to how much you planned on spending. This month I spent a little bit more than normal because of the oil change and the medical bill. In the pie graph, you can see the top 10 expense categories. They'll show how much you spent in dollars and the percentage of all your expenses. You can hover over the smaller ones to get the information too. You also have a quick glance of where you are at with all of your placeholders. The progress bars will show you how much you have left in each placeholder for the month. You can see that I have $676 left in the grocery category because I have already gone grocery shopping once. But I haven't filled up on gas or did anything fun this month yet, so I have the full amount in each of those. You can also see the highest balance for the month, the lowest balance, and the average balance. Want to see a different period? Just change the start and end date. You can look at up to a 5 year period, in the past, the present, or future. It's really cool to play around with.